Yeah, thank you very much. And thank you for the opportunity to speak about natural language understanding and computer vision. I'm working, as you know, for open text and I'm specialized in text mining and text analytics. I have a background in uh, cognitive semantics. So in this session, uh, I would like to cover how natural language understanding gives a manner to analyze, identify and regroup different business opportunities and risks. So this is done through named entity extraction and uh, analysis of uh, the sentiment, which is subjectivity, tonality, emotions, intentions and hate speech. Also, I would like to talk about NLU and how this should be combined uh, with computer vision to identify high risk content. Uh, however, I'm going to start with a more <laughs> broader topic, NLP versus NLU versus AI. Why do we think NLP and NLU are actually AI and what are we doing at Open Text uh, uh, in that regard? So my agenda, first of all, I will talk a little bit about metadata because everything actually here is about metadata. So whatever kind of uh, um, content we will process whenever it's a textual content coming from a conversation that was transcribed uh, to, uh, uh, to a text file, a document coming from a corporate repository, an email, a blog, anything that is a textual content, uh, whenever you are applying this text mining and text analytics, which means NLP and NLU uh, methods, uh, at the end you get some metadata, which is data about data. Then I'm going to focus a little bit about uh, NLP and NLU. What are the boundaries between those two? For some of you, it might be obvious, but uh, uh, it's not it's not that obvious if you take a closer look to that. Then why it is con considered as artificial intelligence? Then I would switch to uh, Open Text Magellan, which is our platform that allows us to access the content and uh, perform different type of analytics on that content, including text mining and text analytics. I will talk a little bit about sentiment analysis and named entity extraction that we consider both NLU and NLP. And I'm going to talk about why actually named entity extraction is also NLU. And then uh, I will shortly introduce two real live use cases of NLP and NLU. The demos I will be providing at, at the end of the sessions today um, in the afternoon. And then I will also talk about image and video analysis that should be combined with NLP and NLU. So now about metadata, text analytics, NLP and NLU. Uh, well, there are different metadata types, right? Typically, if you open up properties of a document, you will see that there is some kind of a size, there, there is some kind of a type, uh, it's a PDF or it's a MS Word, uh, there is some kind of a, uh, information around, uh, around this document, about this document. This inf information could be uncovered using some ETL tools, the tools to extract, transform, and load content. Then we have all the metadata that is coming from the system. Where is it coming from? The file path, is it encrypted or not? So all of this is usually provided by ETL um, tools, but then there are different types of uh, natural language processing methods to uncover other types of metadata, not the metadata about document, but really the metadata that is coming from within the document, from the text, the, the metadata that could be extracted or inferred from within the document. So here we're talking about named entities such as persons, places, organizations, product names, drug names, and so on. Classifications, the categories such as, let's say, litigation support or software or computer services. So whatever is a classification that applies to a document, it could be a type of document or it could be simply a list of topics or subjects that were uh, found within the document. Then we're talking about tonalities, emotions, intentions, which is more NLU. And here we are talking about, let's say, is it positive or negative? This could apply to each sentence within the, within a conversation. This could apply to each sentence within an email. Then 
is there any emotion is there any intention things like to sell to buy to understand that could be actually identified within those documents then we have metadata that we call concepts so this could be nominal phrases this could be verbal phrases this could be some tokens found within the documents so all of this has to be extracted from within the document then also we can combine etl and nlp and get some other types of metadata such as title or the name of the creator or publisher obviously there are other types of metadata as well but here in this session we will focus mostly on nlp so what's the difference between text mining and text analytics quickly well text mining applies on a, at the document level so we are looking to extract some additional information from the textual content of a given document text analytics applies at the multi-document level so here we are talking about collections of documents whatever those documents could be blogs emails corporate repository documents these are all documents and then we are compiling the results of text mining that is performed on individual document and we are applying this on the collection so nlp and nlu well NLP, obviously, you know that it's a broader term to describe how computers can process human language. This could include many different type, many different methods, many different approaches, plus the, there is also science. So we can say that, let's say, parts of speech recognition is a typical NLP uh, task. Automated translation is also kind of an NLP task and so on. This is used for chatbots, text, text mining, text analytics, and behind the scene uh, or the background for this is coming from computational linguistics and in a broader term, linguistic uh, uh, fields such as morphology, syntax, semantics, and pragmatics. NLU is more, bro uh, is more narrower uh, term to describe how, how machine, a machine can understand uh, textual content or the content of a conversation so here we're talking more about sentiment analysis text classification text summarization and then obviously the science behind the scene is more semantics and more pragmatics so also the goals here are different whenever we talk about nlp the goal is to extract rank and expose information whenever we talk nlu the goal is rather to understand relate and rank information so then why should we consider nlp and nlu as artificial intelligence well all of those uh, are using models that are trained using machine learning text and natural language features this could be tokens this could be keywords key phrases and then obviously we need some statistics to associate all of those using frequencies such as relative, real, global, and so on. Then whenever we talk about NLU, well, it's more statistics, more for semantics and pragmatics. So already the fact that there is pragmatics uh, involved in NLU makes a difference. And here we're really talking about contextual rules, relationships between different uh, uh, different pieces of text, different elements, uh, this could be keywords, classifications, entities, and so on, that could be identified within the document, and there is also interpretation. However, the training of those models is very similar to NLP models. So now, how are we using this at open text in our Magellan platform? Well, as I said, Magellan is a platform, and it comes with many different components. One of these components is really text mining. So here we are talking about accessing different type of content. This could come from social media, web page, uh, enterprise content management repository. This could be images coming from a, some kind of a repository. This could be any log data, IoT data, anything that contains some kind of a content could be accessed and then processed in Magellan to get either insights for marketing management customers, make some decisions, provide feedback. 
So I'm not going to focus on the other components of Magellan, but just for your knowledge, we also have the data discovery tools for more structured content, because obviously text mining and text analytics applies more to unstructured content. And then we have BI and reporting capabilities uh, to compile and visualize the information coming from text mining and databases. Open text Magellan text mining is one of the main components of the platforms. It, can, it comes with advanced and continually evolving NLP and NLU capabilities. We have a really long history of development of modules and models. So we, we've been there for more than 20 years in this, in this uh, business area. Uh, currently, we can support more than 10 languages using NLP uh, methods, plus 25 languages for which we are mostly using statistical methods. We have pre-configured controlled vocabularies, pre-configured models. We can crawl different repository types. This could be network drive. This could be ECM repository. This could be list of URL pointing to some uh, web sources. This could be any content that we are able to access using our 40 plus different connectors. And then obviously we are using machine learning models that could be also trained and retrained for specific customers. So what are Magellan text mining models? First of all, we can extract entities and different types of information. So this is really person names, organization names, relationships between a person and a date within the document, organization and another organization, a drug and let's say person name that is mentioned within the document or disease and a person name if it applies to life sciences. So this is more uh, something that we are performing using controlled vocabularies, machine learning techniques, as well as regular expressions. There is also text classification to apply uh, classification to any kind of document. This could be to say, what is it really about? Okay, is it about uh, insurance or this is about politics uh, and so on? Or this is also to, uh, to identify the types of documents. Is it a financial report? Is it a some kind of a memo, uh, meeting minutes, and so on. We also have concept extraction. We can extract different tokens. This could be anything based on the statistical parsing of a document, or this could be nominal or verbal keywords and key phrases. So obviously nominals or anything that is a known phrase could be seen as a low level topic. And whatever there is a verbal key, key phrase, verb or key phrase, it's about actions or events that could be found within the document. Then we have those NLU modules and models to analyze sentiment, emotions, two types of intentions, business intentions and casual intentions. We also have summarization model to identify the most important sentences within the document according to the topics of interest. Also, our text mining is coming with different NLP and AI services. So I'm calling those services because there is just one task that should be performed by the service, comparing to a module that could cover a broad uh, array of uh, uh, tasks, NLP or NLU tasks. So here we are talking about either pre- and post-processing tools for the text uh, that is an input or output uh, of a text text mining uh, slash NLP, NLU processing. We're talking about the similarity. We're talking about language detection, image and video analysis, speech to text. All of this is covered under the same um, component of Magellan platform, which is the text mining component. So now sentiment analyzer, well, how does it work? It's really about finding what is subjective in nature within the piece of text. Is there any opinion that could be found within a sentence and then compiled for the entire text? Is there any emotion? Is there any tonality? Is there any intention that could be associated to this opinion? Then all those values are assigned 
to each sentence and then to the entire content of the document. Then also we can add those values for the specific entities. So we can say something like, we can find, for example, if someone is saying something good about or bad about product or person, or if, if there is some emotion around specific event or intention to buy specific product. So at the end, in the output, there is very rich metadata and then different values coming from one or several of those models. So here you are looking at one of the Enron, Enron emails a classic example in NLP industry. And uh, you can see that there, there are some opinions here in this email. Uh, some of them are positive, some of them are negative. Overall, it's slightly positive. Uh, there are some intentions, intention to offer, intention to hire. Uh, there are some emotions as well that have been found within the sentiment, uh, within the, that email. The same applies to uh, our new model uh, to identify hate speech. So you are looking at a piece of uh, uh, email coming from government of Canada illustrating, and it's a real email that illustrates hate speech. It's just I decided to modify the original denominator to barbarians. So here we're talking about identify, identifying things like homophobia, racism, call to violence, uh, sexism, and so on. Then we've got name entity extraction, where the documents are parsed uh, and then um, validated against pre-established list of named entities that we call authority files that are really vocabularies. We get the concept extractor working behind the scene to provide candidates for those entities. We are parsing documents using linguistic and statistical rules and patterns and then we are extracting those different uh, um, entities along with the attributes hierarchy and relevancy ranking so we are using four methods for that controlled vocabulary regex classifiers which is a machine learning technique and then composite ai which actually combines all of those three controlled vocabularies regex and classifiers so here there is a quick example of how entity extraction works. You can see some dates, some person names, and so on. Now, is entity extraction uh, NLP or NLU? When, when it comes to pattern matching and vocabularies, let's say to identify geophysical names or some product features within the document, I would say it's more NLP. We are looking at the vocabularies. There are some variants for each of the keywords, and then it's get extracted. Then whenever we are talking about things like personal identifiable information, such as social security number, currencies, date and time, and so on, this is both regex and composite AI. So it's no longer just NLP, it's, it becomes more serious, more NLU uh, method. Then whenever we are using classifiers for ge geopolitical locations, person names, events, something that requires anticipation of what we're going to do and how uh, the uh, engine will identify the information. We're talking about more NLU. Now, quickly, real-time, uh, well, real-life use cases. The first one is really CCE, which is customer, customer, uh, citizen and employee monitoring. The other one is the risk assessment. Obviously, there are other types of uh, real life use cases. So here uh, you are looking at uh, Open Text Magellan use case uh, one, voice of citizen customer employees. I'm going to go deeper and I, uh, in the afternoon, I'm going to show uh, a demo of it actually uh, using uh, our tracker solution. Then another one is the risk assessment. It's really to identify if there is any risky content. This could be images, this could be documents, this could be videos, this could come from the audio files. And all of this is obviously configurable and we are following the standards for the PII uh, coming from a content management industry. Then why at the end, why NLU is the future of analytics? Well, it's no longer about content processing, structuring, tagging, and information retrieval. It's really about deduction, interpretation, and understanding. 
Can we find what people say? What are their motivations? How do they react to news, change, message? What they like and don't like? Can we anticipate what they might want to do? Maybe they would like to vote, maybe the, for this candidate or that candidate, maybe they would like to buy this product or actually decide to not, uh, not sell uh, something they, they initially wanted to sell. What are they planning? So all of these are NLU tasks. However, in a current, uh, well, in, uh, when, when you take a look at, at the current content, the content types that we are seeing in, in uh, information management industry, NLP and NLU is not enough because there could be images, there could be videos, there could be audio files, there could be images embedded within the binary files, such as MS words with images or even video files that are embedded within the binary documents. So all of this could be harmful for our organization as well. It's no longer just about text mining and text analytics. So here we are talking really about the computer vision. So how can computer identify images uh, and then interpret and process those images coming from either uh, an image or a video file. So obviously for the video file, we are talking about uh, different uh, uh, frames that should be uh, sent uh, um, as separate, separate images. So now at the end, why should we actually analyze image and video and combine this information with NLP and NLU techniques? Well, today, Today's content is not just text files. Binary files can also include both text and image information. All of those images might be risky for the organization. And then it could contain some vital information, emotions, tonalities, intentions that could be deduced. Image analysis is about threats. We want to understand if there is some image showing violence, adult materials, gambling, weapons. Then obviously we can combine this with NLP and NLU for the extraction of media captions or uh, whenever there is audio that could be transcripted to a text file, we can also use this information. In my breakout session, I will show you three different demos. The tracker solution as an example of voice of the customer real life use case, business use case. Magellan example of risk assessment, how can we actually assess a risk associated to either an image or textual document. And then I will talk about pre-configured REST APIs, basically what happens behind the scene and how this could be optimized.